This tutorial series will take you from a complete beginner to an advanced level user of Studio One. A zero tier guide, if you will. In this third video, I'll show you everything you need to know about automation. At the end of each video, I add bonus tips and shortcuts, so make sure you catch that. I'm also going to show you a way that you can actually contribute towards improving the software in the future. Please like the video, if you like the video, subscribe for more content, check out the links in the description, and finally, if you have any questions, I'll try to answer them in the comments. Anyway, let's begin. Okay. Automation in music production is having the software automatically perform tasks over time. We can program the door to control knobs, faders or switches in certain parts of our song by drawing in lines and shapes referred to as envelopes. In Studio One, you can automate almost any parameter. For example, the volume fader on a track, the filter cutoff frequency on this synth instrument, or the dry wet knob on this reverb effect. The easiest way to automate a parameter is to right click on it and select Edit Automation. Notice how the track view has changed to show our automation for this parameter. Now we can draw in some automation. With the arrow tool, Click on the line to add a point. Double click a point to delete it. Click and drag a point to move it. Hold shift while dragging a point to toggle grid snapping on or off. If you have it disabled here, holding shift will activate it. And vice versa. Hold control while dragging a point to lock the point value if dragging horizontally, or lock the time if dragging vertically. You can also hold Alt and scroll with a mouse wheel to change the value. When you hover the mouse between two points, you'll see this dot appear. Click and drag it to change the shape of the curve. Hold Alt while doing this to change it to an S curve. Drag up and down for this shape, or left and right for this shape. When hovering the mouse over a line in between two points, but not on the dot, hold Alt and click and drag to move both points. If you move the cursor over the top part of the track lane, you'll see it change to the trim symbol. Click and drag up or down to change the values of two connecting points. Click and drag from a blank space to draw a selection. Now the trim control will change all points selected. With multiple points selected, hold Alt and click and drag. This will copy and paste it. If you want to just move the points, then stop holding Alt before you let go of the mouse. Finally, hold Ctrl and Alt to draw with the freehand paint tool. Click on this little triangle under the paint tool to see its different variations. We'll start with freehand. Click to add a point. Click and drag to draw freehand. Hold Alt and click and drag for a line. And hold Ctrl for the arrow tool. You can do this in all the different variations. Now we'll go over the different lines and shapes. With lines selected, click and drag for a line. Parabola allows you to draw this exponential curve. Hold Ctrl before letting go of the mouse cursor to flip the shape. We then have square, triangle, saw, and sign. The wavelength will change depending on your quantize setting. Hold Alt before letting go of the mouse to stretch. Shift to toggle snap. And Control to change the phase position. For all the line and shape options, you can hold Control and Alt before letting go to move the shape and you can hold Alt for the Transform tool. 
With the transform tool, click and drag an area over the points that you want to change. Now you'll see this yellow box. If you've missed some points like I have, then you can hold Alt and drag the edges to resize the frame. Click and drag from inside the box to move all points. Click and drag these points to stretch or shrink vertically. Drag past the center point to flip the automation. If you don't want it to be stretched symmetrically, then hold shift before you click. Drag the corner points to vertically distort. Hold shift before clicking if you don't want it symmetrical. Drag horizontally to stretch. Drag these points horizontally to stretch and vertically to skew. To hide the automation view, right click on the track and select show slash hide automation. You can also use this button to show our hide automation but for every track. The keyboard shortcut for this is the letter A. Click this little symbol at the bottom of the track to expand envelopes. This will show all your automation in separate tracks. Press it again to collapse. In this drop down you'll see all the parameters that are being automated. You can add or remove them like this. Click this power button to disable the automation for that parameter. Right click on the track and select this to remove track automation for all parameters. When you move or copy and paste an event, by default the automation will move with it. If you want to move them independently then click this wrench icon and untick the box next to Automation Follows Events. Instead of drawing an automation, you can record it live. This can be done by moving the parameter with the mouse, or by mapping a parameter to a control on your hardware MIDI controller. Let's go over the different automation modes. When you already have an envelope drawn in, the automation mode will be on Read by default. In this mode, any existing automation envelopes will be read, and new envelopes cannot be recorded. When the song is playing, if you move that parameter, then the automation will be automatically disabled until you stop playback, or until you re-enable it by clicking the power button. When Auto Off is selected, all automation for the current parameter is turned off. With touch selected, automation envelopes are red. If the parameter is moved manually, either with a mouse or with a hardware controller, then recording will begin. As soon as you let go of that parameter, recording will stop and the automation will be red again. Latch mode is similar to touch. When you move a parameter, recording begins. However, recording will continue until playback is stopped, even if the parameter is no longer being moved. In write mode, recording is always enabled whenever the song is playing. So far we've only looked at track-based automation. Studio One can also perform part-based automation inside a MIDI clip, or as Studio One calls it, an instrument part. Let's create a new MIDI clip by double clicking. Double click again to open it in the editor. You'll see a few MIDI parameters already here at the bottom. I'm going to draw in some automation to add a pitch bend. Use the paint tool or hold control and click with the arrow tool to create a point. Now we can click on the line to create further points. We can add further instrument parameters to automate here too. It's worth mentioning that part-based automation cannot be added for effects. This will only work for instruments. There's two ways to do it. Either click these three dots and find the parameter in this long list, then click Add, or just open up your instrument. Click the parameter you want to automate. You should see this change to your chosen parameter. 
Now click and drag this hand symbol to the clip in the editor. Now we can see that parameter in a new tab, ready for automation to be drawn in. Now for a few bonus tips. The first shortcut which I mentioned earlier is the letter A. This will show or hide automation for every track. If you want to see automation for only the selected track, then press H. Pressing it again will scroll to the next parameter. Hold Shift and press H to show the previous parameter. To hide the automation view on this track, I normally just press A twice. The row of numbers across the top of your keyboard are shortcuts for each editing tool. The order corresponds with the toolbar. Press 1 for the arrow tool and 5 for the paint tool. Keep pressing 5 to scroll through the different variations. With the Studio One 5 update, Clip Gain Automation was introduced. Access this by right clicking on your chosen audio clip and ticking the box next to Gain Envelope. This is simply a volume automation control, but the audio waveform updates to reflect any changes. It's important to remember that this volume change is added before any effects. Changing the volume of audio that's going into an effect will often change how the effect sounds, and if you want to change the volume after the effects are applied, then automate the main volume fader. Or even better, insert an effect with a gain knob, like the mix tool, and automate that. Now we have our volume automation, but can still use the main fader for overall volume adjustments. So I mentioned earlier that you can contribute towards improving the software. There's a few changes that I'd like to see to the way that automation works in Studio One. On the PreSonus forum, there's a section for feature requests, and that's where you come in. Most of the top voted requests get implemented into the software. I've linked to three great feature requests in the description. Go check them out, Log in or create an account, then give them an upvote and a comment. All three would make great additions for a future update. So that's just about everything you need to know about automation in Studio One. If you want to see more Studio One tutorials, then check out this playlist. And if you want to see me actually making music in Studio One, then check out this playlist. Subscribe, let me know in the comments if you're new here or if you've been here for a while. Stay productive. Studio One gang. Sound.